and we're online. So, hello everyone, to the people that are online now watching. Hello, my name is Gabriel Evans, and welcome to Paperbird Books Home Club, and this is episode 11. So I'm pretty excited to come on board with all the other fantastic people that have been on, the other 10. Uh, we've had some great performances happening, and today I'm looking forward to sharing with you what I do, my job. So I am a children's book author and illustrator, and I have illustrated over 20 books, and I've written and illustrated about four. And at the moment I'm working on another three, and I wanna share with them with you today. So I'm actually filming from home, and home at the moment is actually in Sydney. So normally I'm in Western Australia, but this year I decided to be in Sydney, and it happened to coincide with the fact that COVID-19 has sort of hit the world. And it's probably not a great time to be in Sydney, but I'm here and I'm locked away in my apartment and I presume many of you are too. In fact, I'm sure a lot of you are actually working from home or maybe you're doing school from home. So if you are doing school, this is a great time for to jump on Instagram and see what Paperbird are providing. So I want to share with you just some of the things that I do to create my artwork. Firstly, pencils. In fact, I actually had a question the other day. I put a question out on Instagram and someone did say, P. Marin, I believe, did ask what materials do I use? So I use pencils pretty much to start with to draw out the line work. I have watercolours and I use these soy sauce dishes for lots uh, for my main colours that I'm going to be painting in big spreads. And then I have my very messy watercolour palette that I use to create all my kind of more small, minute colours. And in fact, for many years I used an ice cream container and I only upgraded to a proper artist palette around about four years ago. So I have my pencils, I have my watercolor palette, I also have my brushes. And I have a whole bunch of brushes. And I have some fairly expensive sable brushes, which are very soft, and they're a little bit like a nylon brush. So you don't actually need an expensive brush, you can actually use a nylon brush. I use these a lot, they do a beautiful job. I also have a very cheap hog hair watercolor brushes. They're actually oil painting brushes, they do a fantastic job when I'm painting. And before I start a book project, I like to get my ideas in a sketchbook. So I actually have two sketchbooks here today. This one here, this one is a slightly cheaper sketchbook. And oh, we're losing, there we go. And in this sketchbook, I just sketch a whole lot of random ideas. And I just draw. I'll sit in a cafe, not a cafe at the moment. I sit at home, locked away, not going outside. And I just draw, sketch a few ideas. The second sketchbook is a sketchbook that has watercolor paper. And you can see what a beautiful job it does. It holds the color nice and well. In fact, most of this was painted using this cheap hog hair paintbrush. Now, I'm actually working on a book at the moment. Uh, I've been in the studio for the past few weeks working really, really heavily, really very focused on this new book. Uh, it's with Penguin and Random House. And I can't show you too much, but I wanted to show you one spread that I've recently finished. Firstly, the sketch. This was actually sketched on my tablet and I worked out sort of a bit of a, a basic layout. So we have here, which I probably shouldn't be showing you the words, but oh well. Uh, here we have here a tree. This is a school scene and there's this little main character just sitting under the tree. She's feeling a little despondent. Here we have the final drawing. And the final drawing is just 
purely pencil. Pencil, and I put in a little bit of color, a little bit of spot color, just to get a bit of an idea of what I was thinking some of those colors in the building might be. There's also some colors in the actual branches too of the leaves. This one was a lot of fun to paint because once we were happy with this layout, I got out some fairly big watercolor brushes, got out the big soy sauce dishes of watercolor, and I painted this. And the first thing I painted in this picture was this background here. And that is all just big washes of watercolor. And I just laid them out, dried them, applied the next wash, and built it all up. Once I sort of did that, I then kind of came down here and painted all the rest in. And I was quite happy. It's a fairly dark mood scene. There's a reason that will be explained in the book. Um, I've got some sort of idea of how this is going to kind of develop. So very excited to show more of this book as it comes along. Uh, I have one more sketch to show you from this book, well, one more painting, and it's this little scene here. And a little character drawing on her bed. Again, very happy with that, how that turned out. But my, my most recent book that I've worked on that has, is coming out this year, is, in fact, is coming out in July, is The Cute Penguin. And because I'm in Sydney, I actually don't have any of the illustrations or sketches with me. I left them all in Western Australia. So I am very quickly drew up this morning a picture of the cute penguin and how he looks. So this is him here. He is completely in a different style to anything I've ever done before. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed kind of challenging myself going out of my comfort zone and doing this kind of crazy looking scene. And uh, look, I would actually love to show you how I drew him. So I have a really interesting setup here because again, all my materials are home in WA. So I have used a cutting board as my easel to balance my camera on. This might not work. I hope it does. And what I hope to do is stick this camera up on this cutting board and show you just how I develop some of my pictures. So let's try this out. Okay, looking good. I'm just gonna change that light in the background. Okay, there we go. So, here I wanna draw, firstly, the cute penguin. And I'm gonna do this step by step. So if you have paper, if you have pencils, by all means, join in. So here we go. So step number one, he's sort of got a big circular head, like this. Step number two, I'll draw the eyes in just so we know where he's at. He has the biggest eyes in a character I've ever drawn. I normally do dot eyes, so this is sort of a little bit odd for me. Okay. Now we're gonna draw, we're gonna start here and I'm going to draw a second line. And it's going to dip down in the middle like this. It's going to look a little bit like Dracula's hairline. And then I'm just going to shade it in. Okay. I'm gonna bring these a little bit further down here. I'm going to then draw in the penguin's flippers. And they will look like this. Now, he's got a bit of attitude, this penguin. He's called the cute penguin, but apart from looking cute, put in some eyelashes to make him look cute, he's actually not very cute. Uh, there we go. Draw in the second arm. And in fact, he's quite frustrated about the fact People think he's cute. He was drawn in a sketchbook and he was drawn to be a cute penguin and he didn't like that. He doesn't believe penguins are that cute at all. All right, so I draw this nice big bulbous line around him like this. 
Now, let's bring in color pencils. In fact, I'm not gonna use this yellow. I might use orange. Okay, and I'm gonna draw his beacon. So, very, very easy. His little, he's got little uh, feet, which are two triangles like this. And the great thing about his eyes is he's often got this sort of lazy, sort of attitude-y expression happening. And it looks a little bit like this. And if you want, you can draw a couple little lines underneath his eyes. So yeah, he's a bit of, a, he's a bit of an interesting dude, this one. Now, I'd love to show you a character for a new book, which is coming out next year with Hardy Grant. I'm still drawing this character. I'm still working on the book. And it's a little girl. She has a lot of attitude. And she looks like this. Okay, she's got a head, which is a good start. And these are the lies here. And as you can see, I'm back to doing what I do best, dot eyes, love doing dot eyes. Eyebrows give a lot of expression. There's her nose. There's her mouth. Now she's got a lot of curly hair and it goes like this. It just goes out, 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 out. And she actually wears a hat. And this hat is like a orange hippie beret. I like to think it's hand knitted. It sits like that. Now at this point I'm thinking her face is a little too big. So I'm just gonna carve in here. And these are all the corrections I never show when I put up my final pictures on Instagram. So everyone thinks that I was started out perfect. They don't know the real truth. Okay, so bringing out that lovely hair. Don't we love that crack of sun right here? I set this up about 20 minutes ago and there was no sun. And then the sun just decided to uh, make an appearance. Okay, now I'm gonna draw her little neck. And for her clothes, I'm gonna use a sky blue. So I'm just drawing this little dress here. You can see I'm, all my shapes of my characters are actually really simple. And that just helps me draw them over and over again when I'm creating picture books. So these are some patterns, keeping it nice and loose. And you know what, like the penguin, I'm going to have her sort of with arms on hips. Because she's too, got a little bit of attitude. In fact, this is one of my first characters I've drawn that just made me laugh out loud with some of the things she gets up to. Okay. Now, I'm really lazy when it comes to drawing legs. And if you look at most of my character legs, it looks like they're wearing skinny jeans. And that's mainly because I actually just scribble on legs like this. I really don't take a lot of time. Legs are just like a, they're there. They help keep the character supported. Apart from that, that's about it. I'm kind of not interested in legs. Okay, coming up here again, working a little bit on her face. Now, I thought I'd use some watercolor, but I've just realized very cleverly, I have drawn her with a type of pencil that actually smudges quite a lot. So I'm gonna still paint her in, but the pencil will smudge and that will just make it interesting. So here's my, here's my paints. I'm gonna use a little bit of cadmium red, which is total poison. So if you ever see some cadmium red in an artist's palette, don't touch it. Okay, I get this beautiful soft color. Now I should add this, water, uh, this paper I'm using isn't designed for watercolor, so it's going to blotch, it's gonna do some terrible things because it hates water. Uh, we'll just go with that, it doesn't matter. There you see, you can see that paper, whoa, look at that. 
See, this is why you should always check to make sure you've got the right pencil. That's all right. We can work with this. I'm actually liking this. I'm going to change her skin color just slightly. In fact, I actually really like that. Beautiful. And we'll do the same with our arms. Look at that pencil. It's just melting on me. And now I'm going to come out with our hair, but this time I'm going to use a hog hair brush. Again, hog hair brushes, fantastic because they have really fantastic te texture. Like watercolor brushes really care with how the, the picture's going to look. Hog hair brushes don't care. They just kind of make some cool looking marks. I'm gonna dry that off a bit. Look at that, beautiful. Look at that pencil, it's melting. Beautiful. I'm gonna get some a bit more black in. Some watercolorists don't actually like using black. I love black. It's a great color. Beautiful. And I'm even gonna use a little bit of blue. I'm gonna paint that in here. Okay. And we'll finish off with a little bit of red for her beanie. Beautiful. We're gonna finish this off with just putting a little shadow underneath her. And as you can see here, I'm literally, in, I'm inventing new colors as I go. No two colors are the same. I see some amazing artists and they are very careful with laying out perfect colors. And I really admire that. I really don't have patience. There we go, done. Final thing is to sign it. There we go. Now I'm gonna pop this camera back around again. So, hello. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. It's, I should say, this is like my very first time doing a live video. So uh, everything is sort of being made up as I go along but I hope you enjoyed that. I'm now gonna answer a few questions. Like I said, I put out uh, a request on Instagram and Facebook a couple of days ago, and I had some really interesting questions brought back to me. So I'm going to read through a few. I won't answer all the questions as some of them are kind of quite, I, I didn't specify, but some of them are quite on the business end of picture books. And I love to talk about the business end of picture books, but I'm aware there might be a few kids watching and that's just boring. So let's ask the first question, which is from Chia Chi. How do you get inspiration for your children's books, stories and illustrations? I'm always either stuck on stories or illustrations and it's hard for both to succeed. That's a good question. Um, inspiration for stories. I find sketchbooks. It always comes back to sketchbooks. Sketchbooks are really that place where I'm visualizing thoughts that are going around in my brain. And sometimes those ideas don't come to fruition straight away. They sit in the sketchbook for months, years. The cute penguin was actually an idea I came up with over a year ago, well, two years ago in my sketchbook and it sat in there for about a year. And I, I, found, I found the idea again, and I came up with a story in one day. So for me, the sketchbook really is this place where I can just kind of develop these thoughts and ideas, and they just sit there. And I have a huge collection of stories, uh, of sketchbooks. Sometimes I go back to them, sometimes I don't. Uh, when I do, sometimes I do find an idea and often there's just like one little drawing with a little comment underneath and I'll just be like, okay, yeah, I know where to go with this. So that's sort of where my ideas come from. Uh, now, P. Marin, now she sent me about 50 questions, not that many, but quite a few questions and it would actually take me quite a while to get through them. So I'm, I'm just going to pick and choose from some of your questions. Love these questions, so thank you for throwing them in. Uh, what drawings and paintings tools do you use? Well, I showed that. Uh, what brand of paper and paints? I'm between papers at the moment. I was using a really nice paper 
which was a very white paper and I can't find it in Australia anymore so I'm actually on the search for a new brilliant white watercolour paper. If you know of one, let me know. Private message me on my Instagram page. Don't private message me on Paperbirds because I won't see that. Um, that would be great. At the moment I do use Arsh watercolour paper and I'm using a Stillman and Burns Zeta watercolour paper. Uh, when I, when I uh, paint my characters, do I paint them separately and then combine them digitally? I love how people can do that, but I don't do that yet. But that's something I definitely want to look at. Uh, at this point in time, I'm just, it's just something I haven't uh, considered. So what do you use to outline the characters in your sketchbooks? Well, my favorite pencil really is the Polychromus pencil, which is a Faber-Castell pencil. Pretty much every illustrator I know uses these pencils. They are great. They have a nice black line and they don't smudge. Now, the Evil Smudger pencil from earlier, this is a Faber-Castell uh, pencil as well. It's all smudged out, so I can't actually read what it is but it does smudge in watercolour paints. It has a slightly darker line, so if I'm just sketching, I do actually prefer to use this one just for sketching, but the Polychromis pencil, fantastic for watercolour. Uh, what do you use for white highlights, like on your black chickens? My black chickens. If you go to my website, you can see some black chickens with white highlights, speckled, they speckled hens. I use either gouache, or I bring in a very small paintbrush with a very kind of hard tip and I get some clean water and I literally paint the spots on the black paint and then I get a bit of paper towel, lift it out and you have your white speckles. That does depend on the type of paper you're using though. Some paper won't give up the paint so you end up just washing over and nothing happens. But if you've got a good watercolor paper, Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, the illustrations in Ollie and Augustus. Now, that is a book of mine I probably should have shown earlier. So here it is. And it's backwards because my camera is on reverse. Ollie and Augustus came out last year with Walker Books Australia, coming out this year in America with Candlewick Press. This book is very different to a previous book I did with Coral Vass called Perfectly Posh Pink Afternoon Tea. Very different approaches. I just sort of feel my way with what I think is right for that particular book. So I don't necessarily have a formula. It comes down to the text, it comes down to the story, it comes down to me just working organically and finding some sort of approach for the individual book. So I'm going to scroll through. Oh, and I'm going to ask, answer one last question from her. Are you planning to make more how-to videos? I have a YouTube channel and I put up a few how-to videos. I haven't put up any since for a while, but I am planning to mainly because we're in quarantine. What else do you do when you're in quarantine? You make art videos and illustrate books. Well, that's what I do and drink coffee. So I will be planning to make more how-to videos and also how I paint processes on my YouTube video. Okay, so we're gonna scroll through. What steps would you take if you don't have formal art training but would like to illustrate your own picture book? Well, this is a little bit more of an adult question. So, and that is a good question. And all I can say is personally, I went to TAFE Art College and I did a very general arts uh, course for a couple of years. Then I went away and I personally just did a lot of research. I looked at how other illustrators were working. I experimented myself and did that for about 10 years. And for me, that, that was a great way to kind of work out how to, um, how to make books how to find my own style of work. Because I, I feel you can learn a lot of important things if you go to uni and do an arts degree, that's fantastic, or if you go and do graphic design. But you've also got to find what your style of art is. And I think that can only come through you applying yourself and just constantly creating artwork. 
Okay, um, we're almost done for today. Now I'm gonna quickly flick through, there's some fantastic messages here and I haven't actually looked up, there doesn't seem to be any questions, so that's good. If there are questions and I have missed them, this is my first time on live video, so I do apologize. If there are, please do let me know. Just message me on my Instagram. And my in Instagram is at Gabriel Evans Art. You can go over there, chuck me a message, and I should answer within a couple of days. Now, I wanna thank Paperbird for inviting me to come on. I also want to say that tomorrow, Tuesday, Samantha Hughes from Inkling Arts is going to be coming on and doing some crazy fun art stuff. Samantha, her art is amazing. If you haven't checked it out, do go onto her Instagram page. I don't know her handle, but if you type in Samantha Hughes, should come up. Uh, she does some really cool fluorescent colored artwork. So she'll be on tomorrow. Do check her out. And look, I just want to quickly say that Paperbird are doing a fantastic job with kind of getting these author illustrators on every day to give a bit of a talk. They also do uh, story time and I, I believe they're delivering books. And these independent bookshops are so important for Australia for getting books out, especially to kids and to adults as well. Adults have got to read. So do support your independent booksellers and buy online. They are, have been so accommodating. And look, that's, that's it from me today. Thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, see you around. Take care.